Citizens of the Republic, welcome to the greatest Star Wars show on YouTube, The Galactic Core, presented by no one. My name's Logan, joined by my co-host Mark. This is the 11th episode of The Galactic Core, a segmented show about everything Star Wars. In today's episode, we have five segments for you along with a sixth for channel members only let me go ahead and send it over to mark to let you know about all the segments in today's episode our first segment for you today is trivia trials next mark's list that will lead into the netherworld then master or apprentice and finally the galactic games and our channel member exclusive bonus segment the kessel run please let us know in the comments below how you've been enjoying the galactic core and if you have been enjoying it please remember to like comment subscribe and possibly think about becoming a channel member today and with that it is time for me to endure the jedi knight trials Let's go ahead and send it over to our first segment, Trivia Trials. Welcome to Trivia Trials. In this segment, Logan will have to answer Star Wars trivia in increasing difficulty. Now we got eight questions here. Uh, three different tiers. The first three questions are in Jedi Knight tier. The next three are Jedi Master tier. And the last two are the Jedi Grand Master tier. Now, Logan, you will also have two lifelines, a multiple choice, and a 50-50. Now, Logan is coming off of a victory. The last time that he attempted the trials, he succeeded so he's looking to uh, go for two in a row today, I'm assuming. Uh, I mean, of course. Is is it likely? No. But I have been conditioned with a little bit more trivia with the exams. So, I don't know. Maybe my brain is, is fresh to it and we can come out with another win. All right, let's quit wasting time. Let's get in here so you can complete the trials once again. Your first question what is Han Solo's home planet? Is it Corellia? It is Corellia. I'm not going to lie. I forgot that the game ends if I get it wrong. <laughs> and, but it's probably a good thing I didn't think about that one because it was just that easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, <laughs> Nothing too crazy yet. I'm too used to the exams. I just, I just answered without a care in the world. Yeah. <laughs> well, going into your second question here, what was the hidden world of the Sith? The hidden world of the Sith. I'm going to assume. I it's got to be this easy. Is it Exegol? It is Exegol. Okay. I was thinking Malachor, possibly, but... Yeah. No, I was emphasizing hidden, because that's yeah. what it's referred to as, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you got that. <laughs> now, your final question of the Jedi Knight tier. How many engines does an A-Wing have? Man, you, you so quiz love the me on the amount of engines on every <laughs> ship. I'm almost certain it's two. It I'm is all... two. Okay, I <laughs> that two. wasn't my answer initially, oh, but okay. it was right, so I guess I'll take it. Yeah, because I was thinking is... maybe three, just because the back of it is is you know a decent length. It's not like a Y wing is literally just two things going back, so it has to be two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you completed the Jedi Knight tier. I'm assuming you're feeling pretty good right now, going into the Jedi Master tier. Yeah, I mean, the, those three questions are always the easiest. I always feel the best about them. Uh, and I think I think you've done well on, on these questions so far. I like these ones. But I, I obviously 
need to try to get through these two, these three without using any lifelines. That's ideal. <laughs> yeah. If I have to, I have to, but we'll see. We will see that indeed. So, Logan, your fourth question here. What lightsaber form does Kenobi use? Oh, my God. I have an answer in my mind. <laughs> but I don't know if it's right. <laughs> I'm scared. Is it Sarisu? It is Sarisu. Oh my god. <laughs> that dude. I was so scared about that one. That was, was gonna... That's the only one I could get off, like, off the top of my head. That was the only one I knew, I think. Yeah, well, funny enough, I picked that one because in Galaxy of Heroes, his unique ability is called Sarisu. So I figured yes. that was a pretty good one to use for a question. So. We're getting in here the five or the fifth question here. What planet do Rancors originate from? Oh God. I don't know if a multiple choice is gonna give me that. Unless it's Rancoria or something. <laughs> like Rancoria. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like that unless is funny. unless it's like that easily noticeable, I don't know if multiple choice is gonna get me it. I might have to use the fifty fifty. And this is this this uh, This will be the first time that we use a fifty fifty before a multiple choice, but I think that's my only chance. Mm-hmm. Oh no. <laughs> I don't I don't know it, so we'll go ahead and go with a 50-50. Alright, Logan is cashing his 50-50 for this question. So your two options here are either A Dathomir or <sighs> B Dan Tween. Dan Tween. Dude Why didn't I know that? It okay. B Dan Tween. Is that your final answer? Do not try to fake me out that it's Dathomir. There's no way, right? Are you locking in Dantooine? Mark. Just... <laughs> Mark, you can't be doing this to me, dude. Hey, you do this to me sometimes, so I'm just... That's true. I'm locking <laughs> in Dantooine. Unfortunately, it is not Dantooine. It is Dathomir. <laughs> it is Dathomir, believe it or not. I was surprised too. So, <laughs> no shot. I I am oh not. Oh my kidding. god, Mark! I am distraught right now. I really just failed on the fifth question after using a 50-50 also. That is... Dude, you could have had that as the last question. <laughs> oh yeah, my I wanted god. To, I definitely wanted to make it a little more like challenging. Yeah, I guess. I feel like the last one was a little too easy. Okay. Well, for, um, the, for the viewers, since I've failed three questions in... Or five questions in. What are the next three questions? And I'll I'll just see if I could yeah. have possibly answered them. All right. Well, the sixth question that I had here: What is the space slug from Empire Strikes Back called? The space slug. Yeah, like when they when they flew into the, oh. the cave, but it wasn't a cave. Oh, that's a slug. That's a worm, dude. That's a sp uh. Space worm, <laughs> space slug, whatever you want to call it. The Alaskan bullworm. Um, the Alaskan bullworm. I've That's heard close. the name of it before, but what is it? Um, I believe it's called Ex Exogorth. Oh, um, okay. Could be saying that wrong, but I don't know. That's that's that's, that's probably an called. easy one for you know people that are really into original trilogy. Uh, oh yeah, for, yeah. 
And then the first question of the Jedi Grandmaster tier was, in A New Hope, what docking bay held the Millennium Falcon on oh Tatooine? Oh my god. I've heard this before. I've seen a trivia video that I had this before. What is it? It's 94. That's the, oh that's the number god. of the docking bay. I'm not going to lie. I think it was a trivia video with Freddie Prince Jr. and Sam Witwer. <laughs> It could have been. I think it was, and Sam Witwer knew it so easily because he's just dude, a demon. Dude, his 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 Star Wars knowledge is insane. Okay, well, what was the last question? The last question here is, uh, funnily enough, another Millennium Falcon question. Uh, <laughs> what's the number and class of ship is the Millennium Falcon? What's a freighter, right? Uh, it is a freighter. It is... Specifically, the number is the YT uh, 1300 Light Corellian Freighter. Okay. That's like the full yeah. See, name of it. But... Mark, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I am happy I went out when I did because <laughs> I would have zero clue on those next three. Yeah, no, those, those there three, was no I, way. I figured these, those two were pretty difficult, so... I mean, you you can't ask for much coming fresh off of a win, you know? Yeah. It's... <laughs> but it's kind of brutal to lose on the fifth question. No, it definitely is. It's definitely brutal to lose early on. But, I mean, you know, like you said, it's... You went out the way you went out. I mean, the next questions, like you said, we're going to be a just as difficult as the the first one that you missed so yeah no, i'm i'm still mind blown that rancors come from dathomir that is that's dude i put that in there because i was like i was like i did not know that at all yeah no that's so, actually some crazy star wars knowledge yeah so i'm definitely gonna throw it in there because i've never seen a rancor in dathomir i don't think so hey that's what this trivia does we learn from it exactly hey even me when i'm picking out the questions so that's true well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this trivia trial segment. Unfortunately, Logan was not able to repeat and get to the rank of Grand Master, but a good effort nonetheless, and we always learn something new every time we do this. So with that, we will go ahead and send you back to the boys in the studio. Well, Logan, that was a good effort trivia trials, but now it's time to redeem yourself. I have two characters here. You're going to have to guess each of these two characters based off of affiliation. Are you ready for this? I am not sure, actually. I'm a little iffy because I, I feel like it's, it, it can be so misleading at times. But let's get into it. Of course. Let's get into the first character here. Jedi Order. Galactic Republic, Grand Army of the Republic, Thrawn's Forces, and Morgan Elsbeth Forces. Wow. I mean, is is it just Thrawn? No, 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 no. Because it would have been Empire. It would add Empire. Morgan Elsbeth's forces. Yep. Oh, Balin Skull. It is Balin Skull. Oh my god, dude! I don't know <laughs> why that was so difficult for me. Yeah, I don't know if it was like the Thrawn's forces that was throwing you off, or dude. It, honestly, it's because at first I forgot that you said Jedi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That would explain it then. We go ahead and get in the second character here. Spice Runners of Kajimi, Citizens Fleet, and the Resistance. Okay. <laughs> see see I wanna say Zori Bliss, but the thing is I think that fits Poe as well.
Okay. For the record, I it's between those two. I'm gonna guess Poe just because I think that would be a really good pool if it was. Yeah. If it I'm if it's not Poe, I'm gonna assume it's Zori Bliss. So technically I'm not getting it wrong. <laughs> is it Poe? It is not Poe, it is not Zori either. This was a bit of a tricky one. It's actually Babu Frick. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I figured this one would maybe throw you off a little bit because <laughs> it threw no me way. off my you know. It Dude, is Bob and Frick. You just sold me. I, hey man, it was a it was a tricky one. I will admit, but it's also a funny one because it's Babu Frick. So <sighs> at least I went one for two. But yeah, you did get one. So hey, but now it's time to do some tier listing again. That is true. Let's go ahead and send it over to our next segment, Mark's list. Welcome to Mark's List. In this segment, Mark is going to be going over all different types of lists, tier lists, top tens, top fives, blind rankings, anything you can think of, Mark is going to be doing it. Uh, I am the curator of these lists. This time around, you're going to be doing a tier list again, just like last time you did a tier list. So nothing different there. The category is random star wars characters now when i say random there's gonna be some big characters but mm. there's gonna be some characters that are obscure <laughs> i'll tell you that so keep this in mind your tier list consists of six tiers s a b c d and f you rank them however you perceive it like you could base it off of their actual character you could base it just off of what they i don't care how you do it you rank it how you want it's your list uh some of them are going to be baby character based others might just be of how goofy they look i don't know we'll see that is true you, we'll see who you pick okay your first character here mark lot dodd oh my gosh we're starting off with an absolute heater. This is a Star Wars CS classic joke slash <laughs> yeah. crazy pool. I just got to throw him an S tier right away. There's no thinking about this one. I, I expected that one. I did expect Lot Dot in the S tier. I was hoping Have for to. that. I'm proud of you. Have to. Moving on to your second character, Bib Fortuna. Oh, good one, a good one. I don't, not quite on the level of Lot Dodd, though. Not a no. bad character, though. Uh, Very ugly. Like, I, yeah, they're really ugly. I, I feel like you got some sneaky ones in here that could be an A tier. I might have to throw Bib in the B. <laughs> B for <laughs> Bib Fortuna. Oh, the A, A, that works. B so, for Bib, there it is. There we go. Moving on to your third character. Watto. Oh, see, yep, that's... What is another good one? Um, any little any. <laughs> wow! I didn't I think, know Wado was here with us. <laughs> I think for him being as trolly as he is. Oh man, do I want to throw him with Lot Dodd? Because he is a really good character. I want you to think about this. Let's throw him an A tier. Okay, A tier for Wado. I did forget to say to say at the start there's 25 characters. So Yeah, so I'm going to You you're going to have to spread them out. I'm going to spread them out a little bit here. On to your fourth character here, Mark. The five priestesses from the Clone Wars. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Cuz I don't even remember that ki that art that well. Hey man. Um they helped Yoda. It did help Yoda, so that's gotta be that's at least, you know, tippable for sure. That's at least like B to C tier. Let's go B tier. B tier for the five priestesses. Sorry if you don't agree with that. 
I'm hey, I don't agree with it. So I, <laughs> 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 this is. I mean, we're four characters in, and you are all over the place here, Mark. On to your fifth character, Darone. This what? is this is the crazy looking bounty hunter from the box arc in the Clone Wars. Looks like he's oh, got a man. mushroom head. Dude, he looks so funny. <laughs> For his looks, he might be A tier, dude. He looks so funny. Oh my! <laughs> but I don't like remember his character at all, though. That's the. He was cool, and if I remember correctly, he is one of the few bounty hunters to survive the box. So. I, yeah, that's pretty typical, man. That is. <laughs> Oh, these are really obscure, so I'm trying to think where I want to put these. <laughs> Throw them in B tier. Throw them in B. Okay, B tier for Daron. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> On to your sixth character, Queel. Oh, man, Queel is such a good character. I have spoken. Or, sorry, wait. S tier. I have spoken. Okay, there, yeah, there it is. He goes in the S tier. That was one of the ones where I was like, he better put this in S tier. Like, I knew this one was going to be S tier. How can anybody dislike Queel, honestly? That's true. On to your seventh character, Mark. Garza Whip. S tier. (laughs) (laughs) Need I say more? Uh, No, you do not. You do not have to say anything else. (laughs) On to your eighth character. Lumpy, Lumpy from from the holiday special. This is Chewbacca's child. Lumpy. I've never seen Lumpy. He looks really funny though. You've never seen Lumpy? No, because I've never seen the uh, the holiday. Uh, oh man, you got to see the story. holiday special. Really Chewbacca's got a whole it. family, and they all look truly. Oh, man, that is hilarious, dude. He looks really funny. <laughs> Oh man, he look. I might have to do an A tier. Lumpy A tier for Lumpy looks so uh, funny, dude. I'm gonna be honest. You kind of you kind of killed this list with Watto and A, but I will continue on <laughs> to your ninth character, the Cantina Band. Man, another good one. Very iconic. Incredibly iconic. Oh man. I think for just just because they're so iconic, they gotta be S tier. I mean, they, oh wow, I, they're just like they are really that on, on that level of mm-hmm. fame, dude. But yeah, so I mean, so. I'm not sure how famous they are in the Star Wars universe, but they're definitely more famous outside of it. Definitely. Uh, on to your tenth character here, Tan Devo, the detective. <laughs> from from the Clone Wars. He also looks really funny. <laughs> Voiced by Tom Kenny, I believe. But I don't remember this character at all. And for that, I I think I gotta I'll throw him in C tier because he's he looks funny. Okay, this is that is a uh, leading cause for where people are is just how they look, and I love that. Yeah. <laughs> On to your eleventh character. Bulio. Oh, okay, voiced by yeah. Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah. From The Rise of Skywalker. I think it's not I don't think was Bulio at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, cuz he gets his head chopped off. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, well, we really didn't see much of him. Um really at all. Yeah. I'm obviously voiced by the great Mark Hamill. But I just don't, I can't put him in a tier with like Bib Fortuna or Watto or any of those characters. I could throw him in C tier though. Okay. Because Mark Hamill voiced them, so I'll. Yeah. I mean, hey, we got two legendary voice actors next to each other Tom Kenny and, and Mark <laughs> Hamill there, so we'll take it. On to your 12th character Hunter. I told you there's some notable characters in here. So this will be my fifth one in S tier. That would be your fifth one in S tier if you decide to put them there. 
his character has been has grown so much not only due to omega but just like the show the crew like they've all grown and hunter has probably been the most uh he's grown the most as a character Mm -hmm. so i have to throw him an s tier i just have to I was hoping you would. I honestly would have had an issue with you if you didn't. I'd be hard pressed not to. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> on to your thirteenth character, Baze Malbus. Oh, man, Baze is Rogue a good one. one. He's actually, oh, man, he is a really good character. Obviously, not very notable, but him and Chirrut are like, they're like oh, sneaky yeah. good, sneaky good characters. <sighs> Man, do I? I don't know if I put him on a tier with Watto or not. And Lumpy. I mean, dude, I'm going to be honest. Having Watto and A is crazy. <laughs> Why would you have him in S tier? I would have him like D tier. Just be. Just, I mean, this dude. Because of like what he does? Yeah. <laughs> he's a scumbag. I put, I put he, he's trolly, but like he's yeah, a scumbag. That's, all, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> But Baze, man, he's a, he's a really good character. He really grows in Rogue One. I got to throw him in A tier. Okay, Baze into A tier, right? Right next to Lumpy there. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> On to your 14th character, Mark. Reek Olier. This is Padme's personal pilot uh, in episode one. He's the one piloting the ship as they're escaping Naboo. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. If it wasn't for R2, they might not have made it off the planet. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just because of the blockade was just set up that good or if he was a terrible pilot. <laughs> so he almost got the ship blown up. So for that, I got to knock down some points. Wow. That's disrespect. Hey, man. You get better at piloting. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's go C tier. C tier again. Rick Ollier. That's definitely one of the more obscure ones on the list. I will tell you that. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> on to your 15th character. Garizab Aurelios. Oh, gosh. This is, I mean, how how can I not put him in an S tier, honestly? I mean, dude, you have to because <laughs> Watto is in A tier and you cannot have Zeb and Watto on We're the same tier. We're throwing him in S tier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to your 16th character. Adi Gallia. Member of the Jedi Council. It sucks. I'm trying to remember her character, mm-hmm. but I don't really remember it all that well. <laughs> I don't know, cause she looks cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> she looks I'll give cool. You that. So for that, at least it's got to be at least B tier, cause she does look pretty cool. Okay, I understand it. B tier for Adi Gallia. On to your seventeenth character, Ornfree Ta. Mm. The senator of Ryloth. Uh, wasn't um big fat dude. Yeah. He, was was he kind of corrupt or no? Uh yeah. Okay, yeah, I he, thought so. He kind of was. Okay, so let's throw him in uh I cuz I thought I remember the character right. I mean if he's corrupt, uh, you got to throw him in F tier. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang. <laughs> oh my god, Orn Free Ta. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Right into the F tier. That's crazy that, I mean, that just shows you that trolliness can really get you up on Mark's list, having Watto be an A, <laughs> while Ornfree Taz an F. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> on to your 18th character here. Snap Wexley. Resistance pilot. Hmm. Friend of Poe Dameron. Oh, yeah, this I'm gonna be honest. I've heard of him, obviously. I've heard the name, but 
Mm -hmm. Man, do I not remember the character at all? <laughs> he does. He does tragically pass in episode nine. Man, R.I.P. Um, Rest in peace to the goat. Snap. <laughs> snap. Um, cool name, obviously. Went out respectfully fighting uh, the emperor. I can see that this is a difficult one. Yeah, to I rank don't for you. Yeah, I just don't remember much about him, but like, like I said, cool name, went out in a heroic way. Oh man, let's throw him in the B tier. Okay, I that's a, that's kind of where my my mind was. Yeah, kind of. It's a tough one for me to rank, but yeah. On to oh. your nineteenth character, Toto. Ooh, Toto, that's a good one. Cad Bane's droid. I do like Toto, even though he, you know, he he's not like Cad Bane evil, like yeah. But he does do kind of what Cad Bane like says as well. But he like doesn't succeed at all. <laughs> he's a good droid for Cad Bane, like it's oh yeah, <laughs> completely polar opposites essentially. But him. Him and Omega actually have a pretty good moment, I believe, uh, in Bad Batch Season 1, where mm -hmm. doesn't she, like, uh, repair him or something? or Yeah, and then saves him at the end. Yeah, so... <laughs> I thought it was pretty... He's a pretty trolly character, I'm not gonna lie. So I think I might have to, I might have to throw him an A tier. I think it's a pretty decent spot for Toto. I respect it. That's exactly where I would have went. On to your twentieth character. You're on the home stretch here, Mark. How do you feel about your list? Uh, I feel a little better about this one than the other one. This one's a little more spread out. Uh, <laughs> the mm -hmm. other one was kind of top heavy, clearly, but yeah, I, I like this list. I think this is a pretty good list. Well, you got six more. On to your 20th character, Dorme. Man, another good character. Don't see much of her, but no. she is a pretty solid character. Um, I got five more after this. Yes, Where sir. Where do I put Dorme? Um, Dorme is, a, is another... Star Wars CS icon. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, if Lot Dodd's an icon and he's an S tier, Dorme is also not as big of an icon, but an icon on the channel. Yeah. So I feel like we got to at least give her A tier. Okay. I re dude, I respect that. <laughs> the, we, for some reason... <laughs> the the icons of Star Wars CS are usually senators and handmaidens for some reason. And don't forget Dak Ralter. Yes, and random <laughs> original trilogy characters. Oh, man. <laughs> On to your 21st character here. Thongla Jur. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> to refresh your memory here, the D Squad arc uh, obviously was multiple astromechs joining forces. This is Thonglajur is a Jedi Master who gives up his astromech to D Squad. So the only time you see him is that moment when they're doing like the briefing, and he's given up his astromech for the mission. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. He looks hilarious. <laughs> the only thing is, though, like, I can't... I feel like, even though I want to put him in A because he's, like, really funny looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other characters at the top have more, like... Well, I guess Lumpy. I don't know. <laughs> doesn't, like, all his, like, character development, but... Or necessarily like screen time, um. <laughs> but he looks really funny, dude. But I feel like he kind of fits in that B tier a little bit. Okay, I respect it. 
He looks so funny. <laughs> so, thong, thong Lager into the B tier. Definitely tippable oh, there. Uh, speaking of the D Squad arc, Mark. Oh, man. Your 22nd character, Colonel Mieberg Gascon, <laughs> leader of D Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! He looks funny too. Uh, give me, can you give me like a quick refresher, just really quick on him? <laughs> I mean, he's the he's the leader of D Squad. He's the like he he lives in not lives, but like on the mission, he's inside the top of the one astromech. He's the one leading them all around. Yeah, he's always fighting with the uh, the pit droid that that can talk. All right, well, he's fighting with the droids. That, that is respectable. Oh man, he looks really funny too, dude. Um. Oh man, this one might be the toughest one for me to rank. You need a refresher on your Clone Wars, man. I do. Well, it's there's so much, and I've only watched it once. Although we are have plans to watch it again, so. Only because I don't really remember the remember him too well, and to kind of spread out the characters a little bit more, I'm just gonna throw him in the seat here for now. Mark, I really I'm, need I'm a gonna refresher. be honest with you. If it was me, that would have been the fastest S tier of all time. <laughs> I just like I said, I I need the refresher on. That him. is incredibly disrespectful. Everyone in the comments <laughs> right now. I need you to harass Mark over this uh, list. Hey, man, my bad. I don't remember. But, hey, it's Mark's list. I can't say anything about it. All right, on to your 23rd character, Mark. <laughs> Dr. Afra. Hmm. Hmm. One of the more interesting ones on the list. Out of these characters, definitely more of a developed character. Mm-hmm. Seeing as she has her own comics. This is true. <laughs> this list is getting tough, isn't it? it? It is. It's getting really tough. Having 25 different things on a list definitely makes it difficult to start ranking uh, mm -hmm. different things. Uh, Dr. Affer might... I'm looking on the... I'm, I'm, like, putting her on the upper half of it. So, like, I'm thinking... I'm going to have to throw... I might just... You know what? I'm just going to quill some time. Just throw an S tier. S tier? Okay. Or Dr. Aphra an S tier. I respect that. Wow. You you definitely <laughs> didn't recover the list, but that's, that's respectable. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, your 24th character. You, you knew he was coming. You should have expected him. I hope you were. Uh, Your 24th character, Arvel Krynid. <laughs> <laughs> he makes another appearance. You know what's funny is if I didn't... <laughs> if I didn't mention him in that... Uh, when you were taking that exam, if you didn't have that question on him, then he probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> oh, man. That is hilarious. I <laughs> will <laughs> he, he he takes out i mean he takes out the executor single-handed <laughs> i mean here we go again that's insane like that they're building up the super star destroyer this thing was you couldn't defeat it and here comes our harville crinid swooping <laughs> and taking it out <laughs> unintentionally himself. though maybe it was a little intentional we'll never know <laughs> okay yeah maybe <laughs> But nonetheless, he did take out the executor single-handedly. So I feel like that earns him. I mean, I don't know where I want to put him. It earns him at least A tier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be really funny to throw him in S tier. <laughs> See, it, to me, Some... Arvel yeah. Krynid is is new. He's on the newer side of Star Wars CS lore. <laughs> you know, Lot Dodd is a seasoned veteran in, in the Star Wars CS lore. That is Arvel true. Arvel Krynid is, is the new one in the game. That is true. It, 
Not, not a lot of people. Some people watch this video might not know who he is. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, you're right. Lot Dot is an OG. He's the first, like, lore reference, you know, joke mm -hmm. here. So I'm going to bring it back down to Coruscant here. Let's go ahead and throw him an A tier. I respect it. That's... He he might sneak his way in the S tier down the line. Yeah, we'll yeah. See. Who knows? I mean, who knows what happens to the Star Wars CS lore at any point? <laughs> he he could make his way up. On to your final character here, Mark. You mentioned a lot. Dodd is an OG, probably the first in the Star Wars CS lore as an iconic character. Yeah. I think you were missing one. I think you were missing one icon. More classic than Lot Dodd. Hmm. Your final character, Mark. TC-14. Oh. oh my gosh. Now this The droid like... from the Phantom Menace. The oh. droid from the negotiations level in Lego Star Wars. <laughs> I... This is like... Like you said, this is OG OG. This is deep Star Wars CS like, lore here. This is the This is the first one yes. that really brought upon these super odd, weird <laughs> characters. Like the, this is what brought upon <laughs> Lot Dodd, Dorme, yes. Arvel Krina, <laughs> Dak Ralter. This is what brought all of them. So how could I not put TC-14 in the S tier? It just would be criminal if I didn't. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Mark, you, I'll keep it real with you. You botched some of this list. Yeah, I... Looking but back you recovered. It, yeah, looking back, I definitely would, would change a couple things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I'm not <laughs> mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Like, I One definitely would think I would... I think bringing Watto down to, like, Bib Fortuna's tier, like, having them on the same tier, I think, would have been better. Mm -hmm. Um, And bringing the uh, the Five Priests up possibly would have been a better idea. I, I think the thing that is so funny is you, you ranked, the, like, no one was ranked off of the same criteria. <laughs> like, like, you know That's what I true. mean? Which is like, you know, I told you, just, you know, go free with it. Rank them yeah. however you want. Because, like, you put Thongla Jur in, in B tier just because of the way he looks. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks really funny. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I got it, you. Yeah, no, it's... There's definitely, like, I have my, you know, I have my different reasonings, like we've mentioned, like, yeah. La Dot OG, uh, Queel, you know, obviously, why would I put, why would I not put Queel up there? Uh, Garza, Madam Garza, why would I not put her up there for, you know, <laughs> that, that's, I mean, that was the freest S tier of all time, to be honest. I mean, that was the quickest ranking I've ever had for anything in my life, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I think one thing is really shown off of this specific tier list out of you, Mark. You are a certified Orn Free Ta hater. Uh, this man <laughs> is, is not only is he the only one in F, <laughs> but he is the only one below the C tier. Oh, man. That you is are funny, a man. certified hater, and I'm not going to lie. You're not alone. I'm a hater of him as well. <laughs> Everyone here at the Galactic Core hates Orn Free Ta. <laughs> there was no other place for him, if we're being That's honest. That's true. He was made for that F tier right there. Yeah. <laughs> but, as you guys can see, Mark made a phenomenal list out of these random 25 Star Wars characters. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for any sort of list that you would like to see out of Mark in the future... Leave them in the comment section below. Maybe, maybe soon we'll we'll do another random characters list. I know I've got plenty that I can I can pull out. We still have some in the Star Wars CS lore that is uh, very much going to make an appearance, uh, and yeah. we even want to do duos again. So we'll see what's in store for Mark's list in the future. 
But with that, we will go ahead and send you back to the boys at the desk. Well, that was another pretty terrible tier list out of Mark. Uh, good thing he's not in the room right now, so he didn't hear me say that. But before we go over to our next segment, we have a special interview for you guys with a special guest member of the Jedi High Council, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, everyone. A round of applause for Obi-Wan. So, Obi-Wan, it's great to have you on the show, man. How you doing today? Hello there. Okay. Uh, it's great to meet you. Uh, I did hear that just recently you had to go talk to the higher-ups in the Trade Federation. How'd that go? The negotiations were short. Oh, okay. That, that sounds good. Uh, have you been up to anything else recently? I have successfully made contact with the Prime Minister of Kamino. They are using a bounty hunter named Django Fett to create a clone army. Uh, okay, well that was a lot of information. Uh, I guess I have heard some, some whispers around on, on Coruscant that we might be close to becoming an empire. Your new empire. Um, what are you, what are you talking about? That's not my, I, not my empire, but why, why does it look like you want to hurt me? I will do what I must. Someone, please get this maniac out of here before he does something. Uh, Logan, why did Obi-Wan look so angry in the hallway? Dude, I think his PTSD from the war is kicking in. He's got something going on. But now I think it's time for you to do another character breakdown. So let's go ahead and send it down the hall to Mark for the Netherworld. Welcome to the Netherworld. In this segment, we will be taking a deep dive into characters in Star Wars. This week's character is Burry Aga Aga Burry. Bit of a fun character with a fun name. I was really excited to get into this character. So let's go ahead and get into the origins of Burry Aga Aga Burry. Burry Aga Aga Burry was a force sensitive male Wookiee Jedi Knight of the Jedi Order who was active during the High Republic era. Now in his early life, Agaburi grew up on Kashyyyk. Now Buri Aga Agaburi joined the Jedi Order soon after and became the Padawan of a Jedi Master named Nib Asik. In 232 BBY, Agaburi and his master participated in the rescue effort to save the Hetzel system during the Great Hyperspace Disaster. Now, Buriaga was actually the one who discovered that several of the hyperspace anomalies bearing down on the worlds of the system were starship fragments with people still alive on board. While Jedi pilots attempted to destroy these star fragments, Buriaga felt the survivors' terror so deeply that it radiated through the Jedi Force Network. Now facing a language barrier, the other Jedi believed that they were feeling Buriaga's own emotions and initially attempted to remove him from the network as a whole. But Buriaga was able to make the other Jedi realize that there were survivors still aboard the starship fragments. Now a year after the great hyperspace disaster, Buriaga and his master Neb Asik actually attended the Republic Fair on Valo. Unfortunately, the Nile had attacked the fair and Buriaga helped where he could. Buriaga was on the Starlight Beacon when the Nile sabotaged the station and he actually became trapped on the bottom half of the Starlight Beacon and later discovered with his friend Bell Zedifer, 
the body of his master, Nib Asik, who was attacked by a nameless. And the nameless essentially were creatures who prey on force-sensitive individuals. Now, during the evacuation of the lower half of the Starlight, Buriaga actually went missing while fighting a Rathtar and was proclaimed dead, though he actually did survive. Bell felt sure that his friend had survived and resolved to find him as his end goal. Bell remained on the planet of Irum and mounted a search, eventually succeeding after many weeks of searching and finding his friend. Now to get into Buriaga Agaberry a little more personally, Buriaga actually disliked social gatherings since most people couldn't understand him and he constantly would face language barriers. Buriaga also wielded a blue lightsaber with a cross guard on the hilt, which is pretty cool. And Buriaga seemed to be a very compassionate person who would help everyone he possibly could, with him also being brave as well. He was also very powerful in the Force and actually did overcome language barriers because he was determined to make a difference. Now, Buriaga was actually able to sense the emotions of others, which kind of help him essentially stand out from other Jedi and overcome these different language barriers that he had to deal with uh, growing up as a Jedi. Buriaga was a super fun character to cover, not only because of his name, but his character is great. And I'm really hoping that we get some more content in the future with our good Jedi Knight Wookiee friend, Buriaga Agaburi. That's it for the Netherworld in this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this character breakdown. If you have any suggestions for a character that we should break down next time, go ahead and let us know down in the comments below. Hopefully we'll see you back very, very soon. And with that, I'll send you back to the boys at the desk. Man. Mark always kills it with those character breakdowns. I never get tired of watching a single Netherworld. But now, before we get into our next segment, it is time to honor all of our channel members. Now presenting the Hologram of Fame. Citizens of the Republic, this is usually the spot in the episode where we would do a channel member uh, ad, essentially. But this time around, it's going to be a little bit different. We have a member of the Star Wars community, AP Gaines. His channel will be in the description. And a recent video that he did put out uh, explaining a, a very tough situation that he's going through. And we want to be able to also contribute to helping him out a little bit. And he also has a GoFundMe set up. That will also be at the very top of the description. If you do want to go check out his video, he will explain it a lot more in depth. But just know that it is a situation that I don't think either of us would want anyone to ever have to go through. Uh, AP Gains is... A big inspiration for the channel and also a big reason why this channel and the Galactic Core even exist to begin with. So uh, we really want to do our best to be able to help him out a little bit. Yeah, no, his, uh, his sense of humor lines up right with ours. He's, he's just a great guy. I love his content. It's always a blast seeing an AP Gains live stream or a new video. So, really do hope he gets better in his situation and improves. So, AP Gains, just know that you are not alone. The whole Star Wars community is here for you. Once again, the link to his GoFundMe is at the top of the description. So, if you can provide financial support, we would greatly appreciate it. And now, it is time to send our next segment to the Council Chambers. Go ahead and send it over to Master or Apprentice. 
Welcome to Master or Apprentice. In this segment, we will be going over your hot takes and deciding if we agree or disagree with them. If you have any hot takes that you would like to see on the show, please leave it in our Discord, link in the description, or in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first hot take today. This one is coming in from Klogot. He says, The Clone Wars is the best piece of Star Wars media. Uh, and he did clarify this was including, you know, movies, anything. Any visual media. Uh, and off rip, I'm a little, I don't want to say iffy. Because the thing is, I don't think it's, like best in terms of just overall quality but i'm gonna look at it from from a different angle you know to me i mean it it gets weird including like pitting shows and movies up against each other because they're just so different but andor to me is easily the best show and then movie is, you know, like Revenge of the Sith, Empire, Return of the Jedi. Like those three are kind of king in terms of best, in my opinion. But Clone Wars is special in a different way to where it's like it has that crazy high highs. But it, it also, out of anything, Star Wars has the like largest uh it does the most world building for sure you know it's a seven season show it just it makes star wars feel huge and everything in between is a unique story and entertaining throughout like it's just like the fact that they did the d squad arc and I was still super engaged is crazy. Like, cause it's just so out there. Like it is so weird, but amazing. And I, I guess what I want to say for the hot take is I agree with it. If you look at it from a, from a certain way, some, if you look at it from a certain point of view, yes, from a certain point of view, I would say it is the best. Best in terms of quality, just overall, I would say no. But I'm going to agree with the hot take going at the angle that I'm going at. Because <laughs> it's it's definitely been by far the most influential out of any Star Wars show or movie. So what do you think? Yeah, no, of course. It definitely did a lot, uh, obviously specifically for the prequels. Um, it made people who didn't necessarily enjoy the prequels, like as much as I did, for example, um, the Clone Wars really brought them into that era, and they kind of found a new joy for uh, the Clone Wars era, I guess you can call it prequel, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it definitely did a lot for that. And I kind of looking at the like from the angle that you're looking at, I I might have to agree too, even though I think. Obviously, you know, we both think that Andor's the best show. Um, obviously, the quality on that's top tier. The movies, the quality is always going to be better. Um, obviously, Re- Revenge of the Sith is my personal favorite, like, not just movie, but, like, peace and Star Wars altogether. Mm-hmm. But for an overall consensus, the Clone Wars did so much for the prequels. I think it'd be hard not to say that it's probably the best piece of star wars media just based off of how many stories you get how many different arcs um all the new characters overall just characters being like expanded upon uh so i think i'm gonna have to agree to agree with it as well yeah i like i think it's just even though you know like something like rebels 
ha- still has a lot. Like, it's four seasons. There's still a lot. It's more than anything else other than The Clone Wars. But The Clone Wars being, like, having, like, its own stories within it, but also being so much about the Skywalker saga as well, including so many of those characters and being so important to that, you know, makes me say it has to it, it's the most influential and most important to me other than the main movies i guess yeah of uh, course i mean i can't really disagree with it so but i think that means something here mark i think it does clogot you have been granted the rank of master round of, round applause, of applause for clogot i mean that is just that is unreal. I think it's been a while since anyone other than us <laughs> have been granted the rank of master. Uh, and were were we a little lenient in what <laughs> what the the hot take was? Maybe, but yeah, but we agree with it. So yeah, it was very influential. So we'll go ahead and get in here to our second hot take, uh, submitted by Beaster four five three. Uh, the Obi-Wan show did more for Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship than the prequels ever did. Now, this is an interesting one. Now, I are, now so since we're talking about the prequels, are we going to include the Clone Wars since it's... I, I think from the hot take, it's including... The it it's just the prequels to me. So it's just the movies. That's just the one, way two, I'm okay. considering it then that's the way I will consider it as well. So this one obviously is very interesting. I, It's tough because they both do such a good, like, specifically, obviously Attack of Clones, I thought was, they had a nice little banter back and forth, all that, like in the elevator mm-hmm. in the opening of the movie. Um, but there's, in episode three, man, it just took it to a whole nother level beyond friendship at that point. Yeah. But the Kenobi show kind of did that too. I mean, it. Because Obi Wan had. I mean, he's had multiple opportunities to just, you know, end it. Get, get rid of Vader. Not to have the problem in the future. And he just. He couldn't will himself to do it but either time. Yeah. He, it was tough for him to see Anakin like that, his best friend, considered him a brother. I mean. And and you, you kind of it's kind of you can kind of see the similarities in the show, and Kenobi and in Revenge of the Sith. I feel like both moments truly are a very emotional moments. But I feel like K- K- Obi Wan's reaction in Kenobi, it's like more so like what have I created? Yeah, I feel like because he kind of forced Vader in the suit and whatnot but i this is a tough one because i don't know which side i want to if i want to agree or disagree with it i'm kind of i feel like i'm kind of stuck in the middle right here i kind of want to see what you have to say to maybe let me pick a side here this one is tough because i mean to me the clone wars is by far like the the most important thing to their relationship it it just builds on it so much and I've heard other people say this about the prequels, but their relationship in in the prequels, more specifically in Attack of the Clones, because it kind of changes a little bit in Revenge of the Sith, but I think it's just because of the age difference, or, or like just the age of Anakin in Attack of the Clones, but it seems more of a father-son type relationship at the start mainly because it's more about master and apprentice type deal and Mm -hmm. that's kind of what makes it seem like a father-son sort of thing and uh, didn't anakin i believe he said in attack of the clones that he's like obi-wan was like the closest thing he had to a father right yes So, so so then you get to revenge of the sith and it's Anakin has has grown more he's matured so he's more of a peer rather than 
someone that is lower than Obi-Wan. So then that's what makes it seem like they're on the same level. They're more of brothers. Uh, but the Clone Wars is what really sells the brothers bond there. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I think I think the prequels build the relationship more whereas yeah, the sure. show doesn't build it. It, it 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 expands upon it a little bit. It adds another layer of you know, Obi-Wan finding out that Anakin's still alive. Yeah. And going through all this, all, all this stuff, you know, you see the flashback scene, which does add some, add some stuff to it, which is cool. Another teaching moment, but I, I would personally say the prequels do more for the relationship, but it's close, to be honest. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot closer than some people might think. Yeah, th- sure. the Clone Wars is like, like this is how much the the prequels and the obi-wan show do for their relationship this is clone wars like that's yeah, kind of sure. that's kind of the deal there so i think these two are close clone wars is the thing that takes it a takes it overall but for this hot take i would disagree with it slightly like the like the tiniest amount yeah yeah i might have to even though I don't want, it's a really good one. Um, I might have to disagree with it slightly as well, but it's like, I mean, dude, it's right there, like neck and neck. Yeah. Beaster, very sorry to do this, but we do not grant you the rank of master. It, round of applause. Really round of applause though. for the hot round take. Of applause. It was really close, and one of the better ones that we've had. I feel like I. Yeah. Never thought about this to be honest and i think it's one where it really could be 50 50 in in my opinion i I think a lot of people do favor the prequels in that sort of aspect Mm -hmm. but when you really think about it the prequels didn't do a crazy amount for their relationship specifically yeah but to go ahead and move on to our third and final hot take this one is anonymous So, sorry, I don't have a name to say, but like I said, Anonymous, they say animated Star Wars will always be better than live action. Man, we're doing a lot of talking about the Clone Wars in this one, but hey. It's it's, It's good stuff. It's understandable. Yeah. Uh, So, this one is also... uh, I feel like I have some kind of strong feelings toward animated Star Wars. The Bad Batch is one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Easily. Uh the Clone Wars has always the Clone Wars is like my favorite era in Star Wars, so I very much have a a favoritism toward the Clone Wars. And then Rebels is amazing. Uh Tales of the Jedi was great. But I mean, live action is kind of just a different beast. They're they're both good for different things. Like live yeah. action is definitely seen as like such a such a bigger moment. Like when something is in live action, it it's because it's that much more important. It just like, has that like big feel type of. Thing, yeah, you know, like, and I mean, this is this I I would assume is also including like the movies because they're live action. Yeah, so um, they're just a, a much more staggering moment in Star Wars, but animated Star Wars allows for you know multiple seasons, you know, done a lot easier than a live action show. Yeah, uh, they could do a lot more with it. They could be a lot more creative with it. You know, in Clone Wars, they do so much with the Force. Like you see, Mortis, all, all these different things. The very uh, the original ending uh, with Yoda, go, like going to Dagobah, that type of stuff. Like that stuff is a lot harder in live action. So I feel like you can be on a different level of creativity when it comes to animated, and the stories 
are like neck and neck to me like they're you can tell uh, an amazing story in animation which yeah you, that's why uh, i i feel like animation definitely is underrated is it better than live action i don't know <laughs> i this is an do all of these have me on the fence yeah yeah every single I, one of these have <laughs> i feel that it's, what were you gonna say? It is. It's tough to pick because, like you said, it. They both provide phenomenal stories, phenomenal moments. But I, I feel like so. I think I might lean live action, and here's why. Whilst animated, they're like the animation. Um, does provide some good visuals and everything. I, I feel like live action is just like next level with that type of stuff like yeah in rogue one that the ending with the vader scene like that was so cool uh you know my favorite duel of all time anakin versus obi-wan on mustafar and just the visuals on that um episode six with the death star blown up and then the ending scene with uh anakin and luke that was great there's so many like great visuals in live action and also animation as well but to me i feel like i lean a little more towards the live action ones Mm -hmm. but that's just kind of my opinion on it uh because it just it just gives like a bigger feel to it i don't know yeah i i mean i get exactly what you're saying it's like like how i was explaining like the live action things feel like they feel more important, which it maybe isn't yeah. a great way to look at it because I think the animated shows are just as important. Like they, oh, of course. they are just as good and just as meaningful to the Star Wars story. Like Ahsoka just came out. Rebels is integral to that story. Yeah. So, I, like guys, it's so, it's so close. You're okay. You're leaning live action, so you're disagreeing with this. Yeah. Because I think we're both also pretty on the fence. I'm going to say I agree with it, even if I don't fully agree with it. Just be just to show that we are 50-50 on this. Like this is Oh yeah, no, this is <laughs> This is a like we just can't decide type deal. Yeah, and I, I it also comes down to personal preference. I feel like too like, yeah, because like, like that's why you want to go fifty fifty. It's just like I've always like preferred the live action stuff. That's why it took me so long to get into Clone Wars because I just didn't want to get into it. Then I got into it, realized it was good. But I, even now, I, I just slightly prefer live action shows more. And this is, I mean, I'm a huge Rebels fan. Rebels is some of my favorite Star Wars content, mm-hmm. and I still kind of lean towards the live action stuff. So. Yeah, and I I was always a fan of the Clone Wars since I was a kid when they were showing it on Cartoon Network. Like that I all I always had a certain connection to the Clone Wars. So then like the Bad Batch being an extension of that just hooked me instantly. So I I'm actually not mad with me agreeing with it because I'm definitely more of a fan of animation than you, I would say. Yeah, for sure. I Not that you mean. dislike it, but oh yeah, no. Get what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, I mean... that just shows we are pretty fifty-fifty. So to the person that did submit this hot take, I do apologize, but we do not grant you the rank of master. Round of applause, massive round of applause, actually, because I think this is this is one that provide such a, a great discussion about it because there's there's a lot of fans of both and there's a lot okay. of diehard fans of both as well so the first one that's had a 50 50 split yeah, the, yeah this is like the most genuine 50 50 split out of any hot take that we've had on here for sure yeah so this is a historic moment here <laughs> but that'll do it for master or apprentice this time around uh, we actually did have multiple people. B- 
be granted the rank of master. So it's pretty crazy. It, it is kind of wild. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you have any hot takes you would like to submit, you can leave them in our discord link in the description or in the comment section below increased odds. If you are a channel member, so please make sure to become a channel member today. And with that, we will go ahead and send you back to the boys in the studio. Thank you guys for those phenomenal hot takes. Mark, they were actually pretty good this time around. It's It's been a rare sight of actually granting people the rank of master. Yeah, no, and I'm I'm really happy that we were able to give out the rank of master uh, this time around because I, I don't like not granting people the rank of master, so it's always good to get a very good hot take that we can agree with. Yes, of course. But now, we have a little bit of trivia for you. On the last episode, you did this with me. Now it's your turn. I need you to guess the planet based off of its description. I've got four planets for you here. How are you feeling? I don't know. Because I did this last time for you. And I didn't know how I was going to do with this. This... This could get kind of tricky, but... Yes, we'll, for sure. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, your first one, your first description. A barren globe of scorched badlands and marching dunes. What on earth? <laughs> I don't know. This is the only one that's like hitting me right now in the head. Uh, is it Tatooine, maybe? Mark, it unfortunately is not Tatooine. It is Jakku. Jakku, I, my mind was in the right. <laughs> I was in the right spot. Yes, just, you were in the right spot with a desert planet. I wasn't sure which one. I just went with Tatooine and <laughs> failed, but that's all right. <laughs> okay, your next description here. Known for its grassy plains, spine tree forests, farmland, long low snow-capped mountains and gentle shallow inland seas clearly sounds like a pretty good place to live uh mhm especially now i don't know i'm not going to waste any more time i i cuz i don't think this is right i really don't think it's right but i'm just going to say naboo i don't think it's right though it is not naboo it I is lothal so. Lothal, oh my! <laughs> I knew you knew that one. Oh, I should have got. I should have known that one. Okay, Gosh. Mark. Over two. Going on to your third planet here. A frigid, snow-covered planet marked by jagged, crystalline landscapes. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm just gonna guess Hoth. <laughs> it is not a Hoth, Mark. It isn't. It is. My Guido. Oh my! It's it's two. <laughs> I, I got two different options here to pick from, and I'm guessing the wrong one. <laughs> I'm guessing okay. the wrong one. Mark, you're over three. Let's see if you can save yourself Gosh. <laughs> from the goose egg. <laughs> Your final planet here, comprised of a vast array of different landscapes, from rolling plains and grassy hills. To swampy lakes. Don't think too hard on this one. You know what? Is this? <laughs> I, I don't know. The only thing that's hitting me again is Naboo. Mark? You are correct. It is Naboo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad one, stick. I think this the swampy lakes is a little misleading there. But it then you bad, you know yeah. you remember like that's exactly where Jar Jar takes Obi Wan and Qui Gon. That takes them that's, basically to a swamp. So that's when I thought of that scene, I was like, "It's got to be Naboo, right?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that scene saved me. That scene I'm saved I'm me. glad that you actually could get one one for four. Uh, not a great performance, but I did. I came in with some misleading ones and some tough ones where. It could have been one or the other, so yeah, not no, terrible overall. It, it it's it's tough. I knew it was gonna be tough because you know some of these, you know, planets you got you got it's a toss up between the two because it's like uh, it's 
Sand Planet versus Sand Planet. Which one am I going to guess? It's exactly. definitely not as easy as it looks, but I did get one, so I'm happy about that at least. I didn't get zero. So. Yeah, not bad at all. But now we can go ahead and get the morale a little bit higher because we're going to have some fun. Let's go ahead and send it to our final segment, The Galactic Games. Welcome to The Galactic Games. In this segment, me and Logan will just be playing a collection of different Star Wars games. This time around, we're going to be playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 II from 2005, but this time around, the campaign. Now, I've never played the campaign in full in one sitting. Logan has, but it's been a while. I or, I haven't played the full thing. Oh, you haven't played the full it, thing. It's been about 15 years since I've played it, <laughs> and the only thing I remember was getting to the Maigito level. Mm -hmm. and I don't I don't even know I think that's pretty early on getting to my Guido and not knowing how to beat it so I never got past it <laughs> so oh, man but I haven't played it in 15 years well I don't know how far it is in the campaign but hopefully we can maybe get past it here yes uh, never experienced it before I'm really looking forward to it I've only heard amazing things about it following the 501st the best clone battalion in my opinion <laughs> so i mean let's just quit wasting time let's go ahead and get into the campaign fall of the old republic this is really how this starts out okay oh my god don't tell me my guido's the first level <laughs> My Guido's the first level, and I couldn't get past it as a kid. Oh, man. I guess you guys could imagine eight-year-old Logan not being able to pass the first level. Before moving on. Go ahead and capture this bridge. Let's turn this place into a scrap pile. Oh! <laughs> Dude, I got destroyed. Oh, my gosh, I got wrecked. Oh, see. Now, see, the thing is, as a kid, I actually felt kind of nasty at this game. And I kind of was. I mean, obviously, I'm playing against AI. But now I'm even nastier. I say that as I'm missing every single shot. Okay, we're good. It is a good thing I'm on your side. Okay. Well, let's get Kiati Mundi out here, Conehead. And let's get this rocking. This is the way to do it. But what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? <laughs> I mean, let's just take this tank out. Just to get it out of here. We do have another one, but I'm not going to waste my time on it. Boom. I They were just standing still. I don't know what to say about that. So what, I just... Okay. Penetrate the shield barricade. Well, I just jumped right over it, so. Can I just get in this tank? <laughs> oh, that makes it nice and easy. Oh, I just I got died right at the end there, but we did it. That is a victory. That was a lot of fun. The success of the mission on Maigido was something of a revelation for the men of the 501st. Suddenly, we realized that the Jedi could be fooled. And if they could be fooled, they could be killed. Uh, that's, that's a bit suspicious. Call it Arville. If you know, you know. Here, we'll, we'll name it Arville Crinid. I don't think that's how you spell Crinid. Oh, okay. So this is 
I want to bypass space, to be honest. <laughs> I don't really want to do a space battle. Let's go. Oh, so, oh my gosh. Dude, that, my teammate just like flew up into me and just blew up. After disabling the final capital ship, General Kenobi and Skywalker took advantage of the opportunity we'd created and yep. rescued the Chancellor. Took all the credit, too. Oh, there, there seems to be a little animosity here. I'm not going to lie. There's like a tension. There's a little bit of tension here. The CIS is entrenched. Okay, nice. I wonder, I wonder, oh my god, oh my god. <gasps> I couldn't do anything. Okay, get a heavy trooper out here, come on. That is brutal. I was going to say, I wonder if it's still canon that the Ackley are from Felucia. I mean, dude. Oh, well, it's glitching out. It's glitching out. What? <laughs> He's like glitching out, dude. Holy crap. That is terrifying. That was terrifying, dude. Come on. This is really cool, though. I will say this campaign is... <laughs> Jeez, I can't deal with the glitching. Out. I can't deal with it, dude. It's so too funny. All right, I'm gonna try to throw a grenade this time, dude. I, dude. You gotta be kidding me. It's a good thing we were wearing helmets, because none of us could bear to look her in the eye. Wow, this is this this is getting kind of deep. I don't know, man. It's getting kind of deep. I, I hope that like, because I, I, th I think that part is still somewhat canon of how like, a, like she had a really good relationship with the clones and to right at the end there, I mean, couldn't bear to look her in the eye. That's just brutal. Kashyyyk. When the Separatists' invasion of Kashyyyk caught the Republic flat-footed, a detachment of the 501st was sent in to stop the bleeding until reinforcements could arrive. It was a textbook suicide mission and we knew it. As we fought our way into Kashyyyk's atmosphere, most of us believed that the only way we'd be getting off this planet was in a body bag. I mean, dude, this is some crazy stuff out of this campaign dude if we go down that's okay we're just gonna crash into it boom there we go if <laughs> we took it out we took it out kind of oh no 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 oh look at this look at this get that magna guard out of here oh Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> We're hanging on by a thread. We're hanging on by a thread right now. No way. <laughs> Come on, it's almost down, almost down. I'm a bit weak. Come on, men. Boom. Destroy this. No, destroy it. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. Oh my gosh, bro. Yoda. Yoda. Summon me, you have. Hmm? Hmm? Fight by your side, my will. With the timely oh. arrival of Master Yoda, 
The 501st was able to hold the line against the Seps on Kashyyyk. We left as heroes. Years later, we return as conquerors. I know. I know. Nothing, like, I don't know if any... The, like, the fact that this is, is Legends, which, I mean, I'm... It should be Legends. I mean, why is the 501st on every single planet doing every significant battle of the end of the Clone Wars? <laughs> like, like, it's kind of ridiculous. But, uh, like, it's still such a good story, and a lot of things can be applied to the current canon. So, I mean, this game is just, it's unbeatable. It's amazing. Oh. <sighs> I gotta do it. I've gotta do it. Nightfall. Order 66. What I remember about the rise of the Empire is, is how quiet it was. During the waning hours of the Clone Wars, the 501st Legion was discreetly transferred back to Coruscant. It was a silent trip. We all knew what was about to happen, what we're about to do. Did we have any doubts? Any private traitorous thoughts? Perhaps, but no one said a word. Not on the flight to Coruscant. Not when Order 66 came down. And not when we marched into the Jedi Temple. Not a word. Not a word. <gasps> ah. 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 Oh my god. What a flag run. What a flag run. What a flag run. <gasps> they just they just fell from the sky. Dude, this is a le this is this is a legendary. I thought I had it. I thought I had it. Get over here. Give me the holocron. Light work. Never mind. I'm about to die. Here it is. Excellent progress. Put the last Kill the three Jedi Masters. We can deal with the well there we go. You, Emperor, will be pleased. Primary mission objectives complete. The Jedi Temple has been secured. <laughs> we made it out alive. Okay. Jesus, that was insane. With the fall of Coruscant and the elimination of the traitorous Jedi, Palpatine's rise to power was complete. In recognition of our service and loyalty to the Emperor, the 501st were placed under the direct command of Lord Vader. Armed with deadly new weapons, Blazing new ships and shiny new armor. Our presence let the galaxy know that the days of the old Republic were well and truly over. We were establishing a new era. An era of order and peace. God, this game's so good. This campaign is amazing. Vader's fist, man. Vader's fist. Well, Logan, that was a lot of fun, man. That was uh, that was a really cool experience, kind of seeing what life was like as a 501st member. I mean, it was some hard times for sure. Yeah, I I was saying it as I was playing. I mean, of of course, it's it's a legend story, like it has to be, just because you know how could the 501st be at every major event at the end of the Clone Wars? But yeah. I feel like a lot of the feelings and a lot of things that are said in in the cutscenes and stuff 
can still be considered canon to some degree. Like they're, you know, Ayla Sakura being very close with the clones and, you know, her saying like they're the, the bravest soldiers. Uh, and, and it was a good thing they were wearing helmets. They couldn't bear to look her in the eye because they knew what they had to do. Like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I've always loved the story of this. And I also thought it was hilarious that I mentioned at the start that as a kid, I couldn't get past the Maegito mission, and that was the first mission. <laughs> yeah, I loaded it up, and I'm like, I was like, wait, why is the Maegito? I was like, Maegito. I was like is there another Maegito level here? I don't know. That was so funny. But, yeah. But it, it was great. It was a great experience. And that was a lot of fun for my first time. I will say I enjoyed it a lot. I'm definitely going to have to keep playing because I really want to get to that Nightfall mission. I already know that mm. that's be crazy but if you guys did enjoy this segment of the galactic games go ahead and let us know down in the comments below i had a blast it's a lot of fun but with that we will go ahead and see you back to the boys in the studio to end off the episode well mark how was your first ever experience with the star wars battlefront 2 campaign man I had an absolute blast with it. Just kind of seeing the war from the clones perspectives was definitely a interesting experience and one that I'm glad that I was able to kind of experience alongside them kind of uh seeing their I, I don't want to say distaste for the Jedi, but you know, they were kind of realizing that they were the Jedi were kind of misled a little bit and kind of blind to uh, basically be being stabbed in the back by the clones themselves. So yeah, and to kind of see them think about that and just go through all the hardships that they did. It was, it was, I had a great time. It was a great campaign. I, I think it's really cool to see the, that perspective of the clones from 2005, like how the canon was then and yeah. how some of that has translated to what the current canon is and how some of those things were kept consistent, some things taken out. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a really cool blend and is a cool way to look at how the clones, uh, uh, how their perspective was. Oh, yeah, for sure. And now that we did this, playing a single-player campaign, it kind of opens the door in this segment to kind of play some different uh single player games from Star Wars not only multiplayer games so that is true if you guys have any suggestions go ahead and leave them down in the comments below we would greatly appreciate it hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the Galactic Core it was another fun one to make always have a blast sitting down and recording this for you guys so hopefully you enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe join a discord and i mean hey maybe even become a channel member today and with that we will send you off good night coruscant good night citizens of the republic <laughs>